Hey everyone, welcome to Dreadnought Mondays. Today we are joined by Alexis Hasselberger. Alexis, thank you for taking the time to be here. I'm looking forward to this. If you wouldn't mind, just take a minute, introduce yourself, tell us who you are, a little bit about you and what you do. Yeah, thanks for having me. Um, I'm Alexis Hasselberger. I'm a time management and productivity coach. So I help people with big lives, people with big jobs, companies to do more and stress less. Um, and I'm, I'm in San Francisco. Awesome. Do more, stress less. I like that. Me too. Because <laughs> <laughs> usually it's the opposite. It's stress more and you do less. So, or right. you do more stressing. <laughs> right, right. We've got to put a little planning around it so that we can get it all done, but also reduce stress at the same time. Awesome. Now, um, to dive right in, we were talking a little bit about um, Dreadnought Mondays, and you had a Monday like the day Monday, you won't, um, that came to mind. So let's go ahead and dive right into that. What is that? And Yeah, so for me, uh, I'm just going straight literal here. We're just talking about literal Mondays. And I think that, you know, the reality, because you've started a podcast around this, is that a lot of people do actually dread Mondays, right? We have the Sunday scaries, the Sunday blues, where we're just not that excited to start work the next day, or we're worried about it. Um, or worried about what may happen. And so for me, you know, when I first heard of your podcast, I thought, oh, like I know a Monday, it's actually Mondays. And I know how to fix that because <laughs> I've done it for myself. Because I also used to dread Mondays in that same way. Awesome, I love it. So what, what is it about Monday that you dread specifically? Or what, what is the underlying thing that you dread about Mondays? Yeah, so I think it's the, the loss of control and free time, right? So I think like what we love about the weekends is that it's the time for us to do the things that we want to do and what we, you know, what we care about outside of work, not that we don't care about work. I mean, I work for myself and I still sometimes used to think, oh, Monday's coming around, that means work I have to do, et cetera. And so I think it's just, for me, it's that, lo that loss of control where you say, okay, now I'm moving into a different space where I have to, I have to do things for other people. <laughs> Oh, no, can't have that. <laughs> no, no. I mean, and not that I don't do things for my family on the weekends and other things as well, right? But I think, you know, that's a lot of, a lot of people dread Mondays for those similar reasons. It's like, it all starts again, right? It, it does, you know, and that was for, for me, you know, even a little bit, like you said, now it's still kind of the case sometimes. But years ago, that was the worst day of the week is, yeah. you know, and I like how you said it, the the loss of control of your free time. You know, I, I love that. Um, it, I've never heard it put that way before. You know, and it brings up a, a new meaning, a new, um, what, I just lost my train of thought, sorry. <laughs> Perspective, point of view on it. There we go, point of view. Mm -hmm. you know, and you know what, it's all how you look at it, you know, because um, anything could be considered a loss of free time, you know, taking a shower is a loss of free time, going to bed could be a, a loss of free time, you know, especially if you're a five-year-old, taking a nap is the worst thing in the world. Yep. You know, so it's all perspective, you know, um, and if you change it to Monday is okay, yeah, I'm, I don't have the flexibility or I've got to take care of this, but it's because of this over here that I can do this over here, mm -hmm. you know? So is it, is it worth it? You know, um, you, you could look for the negativity about it or you could look for the positivity about it, you know? Mm -hmm. It's, you still have that choice. You know, I chose to dedicate this time for this to allow me to have this, you know? So it was still your choice of what to do with that time. You know, it may not seem like it as much, but in reality, when it comes down to it, you know, for the most part, you still have that choice of what to do. Um, so going back to your Monday, what, what helped you to get past that or, you know, yeah. so move forward? 
Yeah. So one thing that I did recently that, you know, within the past year that actually made a huge difference um, for me was that, so I'd always had a no meeting day, right? I'd always experimented with having a no meeting day in my week, right? So it's like I have one day where I could dedicate to deep work. I wasn't going to be interrupted. I didn't have to go jump on a call, et cetera. And I had played around with that day. Sometimes it had been Wednesday. I think I tried it on Friday one time. And then I decided to try it on Mondays. And what I realized is this shift changed my whole outlook on Mondays because now Monday became the day of the week that I looked forward to the most because I knew it was a full day where I had no meetings and I could make create I could get the creative project work done that I really wanted to get done and that we sometimes just don't make the time for if we start the week with a bunch of meetings and a bunch of emails and you know it kind of gets out of control after that. And so by kind of dedicating Monday as my no meeting day, and I'm an introvert, so even though I work with people all the time, you know, I really love being alone. <laughs> and so for me now, Monday is the day I look forward to because I know it's like eight straight hours of me getting to do my most high value creative work. I love that. And, you know, it's just that um, changing of the order of what you do things, you know, because those meetings, those emails, those phone calls still have to come, yep. you know, but it's uh, the order that makes it more efficient for the way you work and your business works. I yeah. like that. Yeah, exactly. And thinking about obligation, right? And you're totally right. Like we, for the most part, like we make choices. I'm also going to say that I, you know, I, we come from a place of privilege, right? And that we think we, then that we get to make choices, right? Not everyone has all the same choices, um, but I work for myself. So yes, I have choices uh, in what, and what I'm doing here, but you're, it just, it just changed the tenor of control for the week for me that uh, if I start by making time for the things that are really important in my workload, uh, not that meetings and phone calls and emails aren't important, but that they don't move the needle as much then I'm able to really start off in a good place. And it's something that now I look, I look forward to instead of dreading. Exactly. And then, you know, then it seems to create an upward spiral, mm -hmm. you know, or if you started with the meetings first, you know, then the whole rest of the week is kind of on the downward slope. Whereas if you just shifted things slightly like you have, then, mm -hmm. you know, those things fall into place and it makes it more positive and more positive and, up and up and up. <clears throat> yeah. Yeah. And it's kind of, you know, I, I think of it sometimes like, you know, that kind of parable of putting the big rocks in first, right? So it's like you got a jar and you got a bunch of rocks and pebbles and sand. Well, if you put the sand in first, you'll not have time for any, you know, you won't have any room for the pebbles or the rocks. You have to put the big rocks in first. And so I think about this as, you know, putting the big rocks first, that stuff that it really needs to move the needle and move things forward in my business, that goes first. And then the other stuff, the calls, the meetings, and the email, you're right, still has to happen, but it fits around the other stuff. Exactly. I like that. You know, a lot of times they'll just essentially naturally find its rightful spot. Mm -hmm. You know, like if you pour the sand in, it'll kind of flow to its its spot in there. Yep. Yeah. You know, and you'll find that those meetings will fall into the right place or the right sequence of order. Mm -hmm. What about for people, you know, um, that don't work for themselves, that have a, a quote unquote regular nine to five job, you know, and they, they can't necessarily make the choice of when those meetings are or having Monday be a creative day. Mm -hmm. You know, what, what are some things that you would recommend for that? Yeah, so I mean, the, the vast majority of my clients don't work for themselves either, right? And there are still things that we try. I think we actually have a lot more agency than we give ourselves credit for. Um, first, we can look at the meetings that we do control. So where are the ones where we sent the calendar invite, right? <laughs> Mm -hmm. And then we can see how can we move these around. Lots of companies have had a lot of success by just communicating with each other, like on your team saying, hey, would you all like to experiment? What if we all had one day a week? And it doesn't necessarily need to be Monday, right? We're talking literally, but it doesn't need to be. But what if we all on our team decided that we're not going to have meetings, you know, on Wednesdays before noon, or, you know, it doesn't have to be a whole day, but being able to take some control back and then being able to suggest to other people, let's try an experiment and see if this works, right? And we don't have to do these. I think that often we're afraid to 
make changes to the way that we're handling our time and our productivity in, because we're worried about what other people think or how it will affect other people. And it's good that we're worried about that. But often if we can just communicate clearly and explicitly what we're trying to do, then other people are much more likely to get on board because they might like to try it out too. I like how you say that, that we oftentimes have more agency than we give ourselves credit for or than we recognize. You know, going back to the point, you know, a lot of things can happen just by simply asking. Mm -hmm. You know, because let's say you're meeting at 10 o'clock Monday morning, we'll set up because that's what worked best for Bob and Cindy who worked at XYZ company and they retired five years ago. Right. So it no longer applies, but, you know, that's just been that set so long that that's what it is. Yeah. You know, no one's thought or had the courage or whatever you want to call it to ask and say, hey, what if we do this and this and this instead of this, this, this? Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And I think right now during, you know, these COVID times where most of us are still working from home, this is another opportunity for us to really rethink how we're thinking about schedules in this way. Because I know, you know, a lot of companies are exploring the idea of, um, core hours, right? So we're saying, okay, well, you know what? Everybody's got to be around and available for live synchronous conversation or meetings between the hours of 11 to 3 p.m. But other than that, you know, people have different schedules. They've got different kids doing different things or they've got other caregiver responsibilities. So what, how does that, you know, how does that open up space on our calendars to be able to help us in that way? And so I think actually, you know, sometimes it's hard, it's hard to find the good in what's happening in the world right now. But sometimes when things are completely shaken up, it gives us an opportunity to, to look for different ways that we could be doing things because we're being forced to do things differently anyways. I like that. And, you know, and just a lot of times, like you said, you can make those small tweaks or whatever, or our schedules are so, and like for me, you know, I'll, I'll work for a while and then I'll, I'll take a break and have dinner and play with the kids and then put them to bed and then I'll come back to work because mm -hmm. that's yep. what works for me right now. Yep. You know, and, and, the, and it works and stuff. And then I could send whatever off to my business associate and they can do their piece with it or whatever they need when it works for them, mm -hmm. you know, and, um, you know, and, and it may not be like that at 11 o'clock for a lot of people, but you know, Hey, um, Sally can, Sally can do this in the morning. This is when best works for her to do this kind of thing in the morning. So we'll shift in and then she'll send it to Bob, who's great at it the afternoon or whatever. You know, instead of trying to everybody get on the exact same thing, you know. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, I think we're starting to see that, you know, there is, we used to envision a workplace in which everyone had to be in the same place from nine to five. And I think there was a lot of resistance to the fact that things could be done any other way. And what's happened over the last several months is we have been forced to do things a different way. And what we're seeing is that not only is it not terrible, but it can improve the way that we work. And it can, and it can recognize that difference that like you with small kids and needing to put them to bed during certain hours, that's a different set of needs than, you know, someone who meets their running group every day from eight to 9 a.m. or whatever it is, right? It doesn't just have to be about caregiver responsibilities. It can be about the fact that we each have, you know, our own life circumstances and we can integrate those into the way that we work uh, without being detrimental to our company or productivity, et cetera. Yeah, I love that, you know, just finding, finding those ways of work and, and recognizing and realizing that it's going to evolve, mm -hmm. you know, my schedule today may not be my schedule next year. Right. And, you know, same with you and same with Sally and Bob. <laughs> yeah, exactly. You know, um, so shifting gears a little bit, how do you help people, you know, you, your thing is do more stress less. So how do you help people? stress less you know there's a lot of oh bob's waiting on this deadline you know and i can't eat dinner right now because i got this to do or whatever or you know i'm gonna skip lunch today because this or you know thing that i found really common you know in my own life and with a lot of other, my clients and whatnot is bringing work home mm -hmm. and bringing those stresses with them now it's really hard when you work from home most of the time too yeah. you know so how how do you help people or how have you found to, you know, reduce that stress, you know, leave the stresses of work at work or even eliminate the stresses at work as much as you can? 
Yeah. I mean, I think like, are we going to eliminate stress? No, of course not. But we can certainly do a lot to affect how stressed we are. And I think there, it comes down to a few things. So one of them is how do, where are we storing the information of all the things that we need to do, right? A lot of us are storing it in our heads. <laughs> We're keeping a big running tally of the 500 things that need to get done. And it's taking up mind share and it's, you know, it's stressing us out because we're always like fearing that we might be forgetting something or, or in fact, we know we might be forgetting something. We're like, I know I'm forgetting something. I just don't know what it is. Um, hopefully it won't be something that's too terrible. Right. And so I think, you know, one of the things that I do when I work with clients is we work to create a, a single trusted system for everything that we have to do like all the big work projects, the fact that your driver's license renews in a year and your passport renews in seven years and it's your wife's cousin's birthday next week and you have to buy you know, a cake and you know, just all of the stuff that goes through our heads all the time. It's incredibly stressful to have that all hanging out up there. And so we work to, to externalize it so that we can actually look at it and linearly prioritize things. Um, in terms of and of course, I'm simplifying that, you know, this is a, a process that takes, you know, a couple months to work through to get everything there. Um, but, and so I'm simplifying for this conversation. Um, but another thing that we do is we really separate um, the planning from the doing. And so this is a simple process that your, um, your listeners could try is to do what I call some end of day planning. And so instead of trying to plan your work at the beginning of the day, Take the last 15 minutes of your workday, whether you're at home or at work, doesn't matter where you are, and really make a plan for the next day. Like wrap everything up in a bow for today. Uh, reprioritize things that you didn't get to and figure out on your calendar when you're going to actually be able to handle those. You know, do a brain dump out of your head of all the things that are still running around in there. Um, you know, the, all the stuff that you didn't put on your task list yet, all the open questions that arose, all those things that you know will otherwise distract you at the dinner table or wake you up at 4 a.m. when you're thinking about all the things you need to do tomorrow. So if we get all of those out of our head, then we're able to look at them and make an actual plan. When we do this, then it lets us actually disconnect from work for a little bit, even when we work for ourselves and our businesses are kind of our babies, right? It lets you come home and, or, you know, come into the other room, right? <laughs> and be more present with your family because you know that all of the work thoughts have been put into a place in time. And that time is not until tomorrow or some point in the future. I like that. And just a funny side note here, when you're talking about um, forgetting things that you hope is not important, it made me think of uh, Neville Longbottom and Harry Potter with his remember all. <laughs> yeah, totally, right? Yeah. And it, yeah, I think there are so many, you know, I mean, there's so many things that we can do to help us get more done and reduce stress. I think, you know, another big thing is like turn off all the notifications. Like you don't need email notifications. You don't need Slack notifications. You don't need social media notifications on your phone. Every single time we get one of those notifications, it's an interruption or a distraction. And there are studies, there's a study done out of UC Irvine um, a few years ago that showed that every time we're distracted, whether we're distracting ourselves or whether it's technology or you know, anything else, that it takes us on average 23 minutes, not seconds, 23 minutes to refocus. Right. So if we can imagine, I mean, you know, I think this study showed that people were interrupted on average every 11 minutes. I think that most people would say it's far more often than that. Just imagine how much time uh, we're kind of wasting every day and that feels like it's kind of stolen from us. Right. And then we're trying to get back on track. It's like the Sisyphusian effort where we're, we're always trying to recover and then we get distracted before we recover. And that we just find, you know, we get to the end of the day and we're like, well, I don't, I don't know what happened. I've been working all day. I haven't been messing around, but somehow I didn't cross anything off the to-do list. Yeah, that's so often the case. And just the fact right there seems to add more stress and mm -hmm. to, to your already stressed list and whatnot. Yeah. yeah. And then you mentioned um, externalizing things and whatnot. And, you know, um, I'd like to add to that. Just find something that works for you. You know, some people like, I'll use Google Calendar, you know. My wife and I have it synced on our calendar so we can see each other's calendar and stuff. But sometimes, you know, I don't I don't have time or I don't have the focus or the um you know, the desire at the moment to sit down and put in forty things in my calendar or whatever. You know, so sometimes what works for me is I'll write a couple things if they're like super important on a sticky note, 
-hmm. then I'll take a break, go get a drink or go play with the kids for a while. And then I'll come back and then I'm kind of refocused, you know, have that drive back or whatever. Then I can sit down and put my thoughts on mm -hmm. paper or a computer. You right. Know, so just, um, right. Whatever works for you, you know, because oftentimes when I first started doing this, I did, that's, that's what in my eyes was one more thing to do. There's something else I had to do. Mm -hmm. That's my already busy list is, right. you know. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, it's interesting, right? It's like, you know, you know, I think there's so much value in having a system, but you never want an item on your list to be update my list, right? And so I think that's where a lot of people um, just run into some trouble when they try to adopt new systems that are, you know, I think a lot of people have what I call the graveyard of abandoned task apps on their phone where you, you know, open up Trello and it's, you know, a list of things from three years ago that you didn't do, right? Uh, and so I think what, what often happens is that we view our task systems or our task lists as something that we have to keep updated instead of the thing that drives the work itself, right? And so I think what I like about what you just said is one, yes, everybody's different. So we just have like the, the what system you should use is the one that you can most consistently use. Like it doesn't matter if it's good for me or good for you. It's like, it has to be good for the specific person who's doing it. And then, you know, the second piece of that is that it shouldn't be a, like whatever system we're using, it shouldn't be a kind of repository of things that we're gonna check at some point in the week. It should be, we are, this is what we're looking at and we're doing it now. So your sticky note method, right? You're saying, okay, I need to take a break right now. I need to externalize from my head what I'm thinking about so that I don't forget about it and I don't have to use my memory to remember it. And then I'm gonna go do some other things and then I'm gonna come back and now I don't have to sit there thinking, wait, what was I doing? Uh-oh, what, what was I gonna forget? Because you put it right there in front of you, right? Yeah, thank you. Um, I also wanna go back, you know, um, what's something, you talked a little bit about, you know, this preparation and dis disconnecting from work or whatever. Mm -hmm. What's something that you do or would recommend people do, you know, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, to help get them in a, in a better state of mind for Monday, if you will. Yeah. Or more so they're looking forward to Monday or not dreading it so much, you know, things that they can do instead of Sunday afternoon, uh, tomorrow's Monday. <laughs> yeah. So what I highly recommend is that end of day planning process that I talked about. On Fridays, you wanna do a broader version of that called end of week planning. And basically what you're doing here is you're looking at your calendar for next week, you're looking at your task list for next week, and you are deciding what you're gonna do when, right? So of course, we're not gonna be able to get it to the minute or anything, but you're basically saying, okay, here's what I'm gonna tackle on Monday. Here are the, maybe it's just here are the three things that absolutely have to get done Monday, right? And here are the couple of things that absolutely have to get done on Tuesday. Again, it doesn't, you know, you know, I'm a person that time blocks my calendar to the minute, but that's not everybody, right? And so even just coming up with a plan of here's what I'm going to do and when, when you do that, now you're, now when you get to the end of that, you know, that process, now you know that you have from Friday night to, to Monday morning to be able to not do any of those things and not think about that stuff because you've already made a plan for it. And so your mind isn't like, thinking, oh, I, I'm late, I have to do it, I'm behind, because you already made a plan and that plan is in the future, right? And so I really recommend, for me, I mean, I'm a giant nerd and my end of week planning process is like my favorite 20 minutes of my entire week because I get so excited about making the plan and then as soon as it's done, I know that like, I don't have to think about, it. I do not have to think about work-related things, even though I love my business and I love my company, I don't have to think about that until, you know, Monday morning. I also, you know, I, I don't answer email on the weekends either. And so I think that's, that's a huge thing too. And again, I, you know, some people say, well, I, I work for other people. I can't not answer email on the weekends, right? But I worked for other people for 20 years and I never once checked email on the evenings or the weekends because, uh, and, and never on vacation either. And I had a successful career and I, I did that because the reality is people will find you if they need you. Like if somebody really needs you and it's an emergency, they will call you on the phone. <laughs> they will not just be like, oh, they didn't check their email and the company's burning down. So I guess we'll just, we'll just leave it there, right? And so really think about how to protect your time. Some of my clients have had a lot of success with 
you know, the guilt around not working on weekends and things like that by literally blocking out their calendar from Friday evening to, you know, Monday morning that says, do whatever I want. Like there's a calendar block that's in there because it's, it's basically saying to yourself, no, I have made a plan. And my plan is that I'm going to enjoy this weekend, you know? I like that. It's just those, those small preparations you put in place beforehand. No, and to go with, um, you know, someone's on the weekend or vacation or whatever, you know, you can, you know, um, just prepare your clients, you know, hey, I'm going to be out of town, blah, blah, blah. Mm -hmm. You know, um, if you have uh, an assistant or someone that can do the same thing that you're doing or whatever, if you need something, you know, call Sally or, you know, or if it's an emergency, here's my cell phone or whatever. And then also the automated reply emails and stuff. I'm out of town, you know, same thing, blah, blah, blah. Here's, if you need something, here's Sally. If you need, so there's some simple steps you can take just kind of help, you know, make, um, <clears throat> prepare for that. Sorry. Yeah, exactly. Right. I think you're totally right with the automated responses. I mean, I have an auto responder that goes out from Fridays at five until Mondays at nine in the morning that says, it's the weekend, I'll respond next week. <laughs> if you want information on why I'm not checking on the weekends, check out my blog post about why disconnecting is a, is a really productive tool. <laughs> and so, you know, again, that's a different message than I had when I worked for other people. When I worked for other people, it was something along the lines of, hey, I'm not available, um, you know, in the evenings or weekends, unless there's an emergency. If there's an emergency, here's my number. If, exactly as you said, you know. And then people think twice about what is and what is not an emergency. So, and that brings me to another point, you know, kind of along some of these things. What would be good for someone, let's say their, their job, nine to five job or their career, or whatever, is such that they are on call? Mm -hmm. You know, if it's like in a medical or, you know, something like that, or, you know, just a, a profession where, and they have to be on call or answer emails pretty much whenever, so they can't have that option. Yeah, so I mean, I think if, you, uh, if you're on call, like let's say you're a doctor, right? You're on call. Those are typically, you're on call one weekend a month or like, one, you know, it, it's not 100% all the time. Now, of course, there are, there are jobs, lots of them, where the expectation is that you're available 100% of the time. And so if that's not something, like for me, I would never, like, that's not something that I'm okay with, right? So, like, I wouldn't do that. But uh, I know that a lot of people don't have that choice. And so, the, I think what we have at the arsenal that we have available to us when that's the expectation is to be able to explicitly speak to our manager or whoever it is to say, hey, you know, I here's a bunch of research that I've learned about why it's really important for our productivity, for creativity, for our accuracy to be able to take breaks mentally from work. And so I'd like to try something out. I'd like to block off and say, I'm not going to, you know, answer email on the, you know, on the evening, say from like 5 p.m. to 8 p.m. That's family time for me, but I will check my email again at 8 p.m. and just make sure there are no emergencies, right? Or you may be able to work out some kind of schedule like that. Or you may say, you know, I'm not going to actively check my email, but I'm going to have an out of office reply, a Slack status update and all these things that say, I'm not checking email right now, but if it's an emergency and you need me right now, please give me a text on this phone, right? So I think there are a lot of ways that we can talk to other people to see, you know, what may, what we might be able to change. Again, I think it's, a lot of it is about communication and the fact that, you know, as my mom always told me, you don't get what you don't ask for. And so, you know, I think that it's one of those things where, yeah, not everybody's going to have the, you know, the complete control. In fact, most people don't have complete control over these things. But what we do have is control over our own actions and reactions. And we can certainly ask for other people to engage in an experiment with us and see if it works. And I've also found that using the language of experimentation over change is something that really helps things go down a bit easier. So if we say to our boss, hey, I have been doing a lot of research about productivity and I would like to be able to experiment with having certain hours of the day that I'm, you know, I'm not available, that I'm not checking my email, but of course I'm available if you need me, just call me. Um, would you be open to trying that for a couple of weeks and seeing if, it's, if it works or if it doesn't? Now, 
the majority, the grand majority of people are not going to be like, no, I am unwilling to do an experiment where you're going to increase your productivity, right? Like this just seems ridiculous. Whereas if we say, hey, I'm going to make this change, like take it or, you know, you know, leave it or et cetera, that might not go over as well. And so I think approaching things with the lens of experimentation and collaboration is really helpful when um, there's an expectation that's been set. I like that. Thank you. You know, and it um, makes me think of people that I've I've known that, you know, that they're on call because they're the the VP or the CEO, so they've got to be on call. You know, just the name of the business. But you know, but because of that, you know, they're they're all watching a movie at two in the afternoon or taking going golfing at three o'clock or whatever. You know, just kind of that's that's my me time. You know, if you really need something. Here's my cell phone, or like we discovered this just before, you know, between <clears throat> five to eight, you know, I'm I'm off, you know. Here's Sally, and if mm -hmm. Sally really needs something, she knows how to get a hold of me. Right. <clears throat> so, like I said, yeah. if you just ask and you know, communicate, and maybe you'll come up with a plan. It might take a couple tries or a couple different tweaks, but there might be something that you could work out that makes it work better for everybody. So, thank you. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Awesome. Um, what about like when starting your business, you know, and transitioning, especially for people that are transitioning from um, nine to five to a business owner or even doing it on the side, you know, so they're, they're working their full-time job and they're doing their, their side business to try and grow that up, you know, so their hours are really limited even more. You know, how do you, how do you help them stress less and try and, you know, um, let's transition mm -hmm. between the two things every day, you know, okay, I'm on my, my work, got my work hat on, now I got my business hat on, mm -hmm. you know, but a lot of times it's kind of mumbled. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, so there are, you know, there are, there was some research done from Google's HR team several years ago that really talked about the difference between integrators versus segmenters. And integrators are people who really, you know, they engage in that flow. So they like going back and forth between home and work and all the other things. And, you know, they, they really like the back and forth. They like blurry boundaries. They, you know, there's more osmosis going on. Uh, and then there are segmenters and segmenters are people who want really strong boundaries between the areas of their lives, right? They, these are people who are probably not very happy about the fact that they're working at home right now because they were people who in the past did not want to ever take their laptop home, right? <laughs> or they were the people who really bristled at having to answer an email or a phone call on the weekend versus some people who are integrators who just, you know, really like that kind of flux between and that, you know, that some of the, they experience that as a freedom. Whereas other people who are segmenters experience the kind of separation as a, a freedom a little bit. And so I think one thing is it's important to know where you fall on that spectrum because that's going to affect how you want to, you know, how you want to structure your time. If you are someone who is working a nine to five, also got a side hustle going and a family, and you're a segmenter, you're going to probably really rankle at the merging of all these things all the time of having multiple, you know, being able to do the doctor's appointment and then, you know, do your work project and then take a, you know, a client call for your new business, that's going to be really stressful for you. If you, and so instead I would say, well, we want separate task lists for each of those zones and we want to actually designate separate time for it. So for me, even though I work for myself, um, I'm a strong segmenter. And so I work between certain hours and the rest of the time is time that I reserve to family. And I don't work during those times. And I also really don't do family stuff during the work times, right? Um, that works for me. But for people who are integrators, they might have a they might have a single coordinated task system between all the areas of their lives, and they might be doing their planning around. Okay, so between the hours of eight to ten, I have these five things that I need to do, and they may fall into different areas of my life, but that's okay because they're all consolidated on one list, right? And so I think that it's really a matter of, you know, both figuring out where and when you're going to do these things, but also of recognizing the fact that we can't do everything. Like we are not going to, you know, or I guess we'll say we're going to die someday with a big long list of things we didn't do. And that's okay. Like that's totally fine. And so part of it when we have so many different responsibilities is taking a look and saying like, 
what's okay with us, right? Do, do we want to be working eight hours at a job and then be working eight hours at a side hustle and have no time for our families and just time for sleep? Or are we gonna get our side hustle up a little bit slower by working on it four hours a day instead of eight? You know, what does a reasonable life look like to us? And then we can start to track our time and we can say, okay, well, how are you spending your time right now? <laughs> Once we have some data around that, then we can look at it and say, how does this align with how you want to be spending your time? What could, what could we move around, right? What could we switch up or what could we be doing less of or what could we be doing more of? What could we focus on so that we're not feeling like we have to do all things at all times? Thank you. And that, that brings back, you know, prioritizing and looking at things, you know, um, growing up, for me, Saturday was chore day, you know, so when I moved out and stuff, you know, Saturday was chore day because that's just mm -hmm. what it was for me. But then as I started, um, you know, in the entrepreneurship and whatnot, I'm like, is this really going to make a difference if I mow it today versus in three days? Where the, if I, I postpone mowing the lawn, then it'll allow me to do this, which will grow my family and my business more. And then the lawn mowing will get eventually done, <laughs> you know, or, or whatever it is, you know, are those dishes, they're not going to go anywhere, you know, so waiting a couple hours while I finish up this task over here to make my business or learn, you know, educate myself, whatever, you know, those dishes can wait, you know, so just a lot of different things that you may not think of or <clears throat> look at. Yeah, exactly. I mean, I think, and we all have, we all have different levels, uh, you know, we all have different circumstances. And so, you know, some people might be saying like, well, there's no way I could possibly work with dirty dishes in the sink because all I'm going to be thinking about is those dirty dishes growing mold over there, right? Whereas for you, you're like, no, 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 I don't, those, those dishes don't matter to me right now because I'm focused on what my priority is, right? And so I, I think you're right that what, what we want to do is just be mindful about where we are there, right? Um, because we may have, you and I may have the same, we could look at our list and we say, well, we have the same things we have to do, but we might prioritize those in very different ways. And what we want to do is just be mindful about that prioritization instead of just blindly, you know, following whatever we had been doing in the past, right? Absolutely. You know, and not to say that those things in the past are necessarily bad, it just, mm -hmm. you know, it's time for change and no longer relevant or right. apply applicable. Right. And it's like, I mean, when you go into a company, right, and you hear like you're a brand new employee at a company and you have some idea for how we could do something different. And what you hear is, no, we do it this way because it's always been done this way. Right. That's not <laughs> that never strikes you as like, that's a great that's a great excuse. Right. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You're like, and, <laughs> and yeah. And what's the result of that? <laughs> so awesome. So. One more question. Where can people find you if they wanted to reach out to you, learn more about what you do? Yeah, perfect. Um, so people can reach me at alexishasselberger.com, which I know is a mouthful. So hopefully you'll throw that into the show notes. Um, you can sign up for, I send out a weekly newsletter with productivity and time management tips, and you're welcome to sign up for that there. Um, I, have some, I have some free downloads and some free resources for people. You can also find me on Instagram at do.more.stress.less or on Facebook at do more stress less. Awesome. And yeah, we will post those in the notes with this and in the comments. So awesome. And Alexis, thank you so much for being here and thank you for sharing your insight and your knowledge and experience that you have. I've been great talking to you. Yeah. Thank you so much.